The War of Truth, Credibility, Minds and Leaders Dotting I's and Crossing T's, Nasser Qandil A concurrent face-off took place between leaders and minds, with the contest being about the ability to tell the truth and fulfill promises, the whole world watching this contest. Then came a historic moment, deeper and more resonant than the action of the warheads exchanged in the war operations, making the war a war of truth, credibility, minds and leaders. It was a moment in which wars are won and lost, and where the spirit, values, competence, fortitude, cohesion in people and leaders, and their holding steadfast to constants and principles are representative of a deep-rooted collective consciousness. At dawn yesterday, each of Al-Muqawma and the entity were at their highest level of command and decisions, getting ready for the decisive moment. Al-Muqawma was preparing the promised response in retaliation for the entity's crossing of the red line of the attack on Al-Dahya Janubiya, Beirut's southern suburb, and the assassination of the high commander in Al-Muqawma, the martyr Fuad Shukr, while the entity was preparing for what its prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, described as a preemptive strike to prevent this response. During the day and by its end, we were before a narration presented by al muqawma through her leader and master, as Sayyid Hassan Nasrallah, saying that the occupations, armies, air raids targeted and hit missile launch pads, but not preemptively or preventively, because they failed to inflict any damage to the launch pads readied for the response's execution, a response which was, in fact, carried out. Al Muqawma also narrated her account of the hundreds of launched missiles acknowledged by the occupation covering the area of northern Palestine and said that the mission of these missiles was the attempt to hit important military targets in North Palestine. But their prime mission was to confuse radars and defensive air missiles to secure pathways for the drones towards a qualitative target located inside the entity's depth, which the drones passed through and hit their target. Then came the Israeli Broadcasting Service's announcement of a strike on a strategic establishment in the center of the entity, confirming al muqawmas narrative. However, the entity's narrative about a preemptive and preventive strike was glaring in its lies, requiring its modification several times and pushing the media and analysts in the entity to sarcasm and professional embarrassment at its adoption. How could it be believed that al muqawma was building her response on sending 8,000 missiles to strike Tel Aviv? And how could it be believed that the entity destroyed these strategic missiles, their explosive power which would have shaken the earth in Beirut and Tel Aviv, considering that they will have amounted to 4 million tons of explosives if we consider 150 kilograms of explosives for each warhead, while some of the missiles mentioned have warheads reaching 500 kilos and 1,000 kilos. al muqawma concluded her narration by speaking about a follow-up to see whether the results of the operation were to her satisfaction or not, while the entity's leaders came out speaking in a manner defying logic to any rational individual about their success in intercepting thousands of strategic missiles, begging the question about the winner in the war of true narrative. al muqawma consistently scores wins in the war of truth, and has accumulated a big balance in her narrative's favor among the entity settlers. The war of credibility is that of promised fulfillment, that is, for deeds as proof of what is said. In this context, al muqawma first promised a response, then responded. She promised a courageous response. Is there any more proof of courage than the entity's acknowledgement that a strategic target in its center was hit, that is, a red line not crossed in the July 2006 war was crossed for the first time from Lebanon's border by al muqawma in the midst of Israeli threats of a war in response to any response, and in the midst of unprecedented American military amassment which arrived under the headline of defending the entity from any expected response by Iran and Hezbollah, according to the American president, what al muqawma is in effect saying is that she is undaunted by Israeli threats and all the American support. al muqawma said that her response will be thoughtful and well studied and responded in kind to the attack of her capital southern suburb with an attack on the entity's capital's northern suburb and targeted a strategic establishment as announced by the Israeli broadcast service in retaliation for the targeting of a security symbol in al muqawma represented by Commander Fuad Shukr. Al Muqawma revealed the headquarter of the military security establishment, Amman, 
and a facility belonging to Unit 8200 specialized in spying and special operations, assassination operations in particular, as having been hit. The response was a studied one from a geographic, symbolic, and technical aspect, evidenced by the compatibility between the missiles and drones and the mission of each, and also in terms of not drawing a war which al muqama repeatedly said it does not want. Here comes the entity's leadership confirming that the response will not draw a war through its statement that it does not want a war or escalation and considers the matter at an end if al muqama considers the same. al muqama embodied her credibility with precision. But what about the credibility of the entity's political and military re- leadership, which over the last 11 months continuously threatened war on Lebanon with all its leaders taking turns making such threats and increasing the rate of their threats when al muqawma announced her decision to respond. Even if we hypothetically concede the entity's operation as a preemptive action, al muqawmas drone's mere penetration of Tel Aviv's airspace, even if no damages were inflicted, is supposed to have been considered sufficient reason to translate into action the threats that were awaiting a sufficient reason. Could there have been a reason stronger and more clear? This is how al muqawma won, along with the war of truth, the war of credibility, with her words manifested in deeds, while the entity's statements, when put to the test of action, evaporated. As for the war of minds, the war between drones and the air dome missiles and air defense radars formed a war between hundreds of minds lined up on each side of the confrontation, where hundreds of university graduates and electronic specialists in front of their screens, in Lebanon operating drones and finding pathways to guarantee reaching targets, and on the entity's military side exerting equal efforts to down these drones and prevent them from crossing. When the morning hours came to a close and the drones reached their targets, victory in the war of minds was decided for al muqawma As for the war of leaders, a survey of the entity settlers about who constitutes, in their opinion, the role model for a leader, a Sayyid Nasrallah or Benjamin Netanyahu, will suffice, while in the Palestinian, Jerusalem, and al muqawma public, this question is redundant.